Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Finish off with Birmingham, the South Division champion Birmingham Stallions by having uh, Coach Skip Holtz make an opening statement, and he's got uh, Alex Magoo, all USFL quarterback, and uh, Davion Davis, who is not only the second leader in uh, reception yards this year, but is also the team's uh, nominee for Sportsman of the Year. So, Coach, go ahead. Well, certainly. Thank you. It's a, it's an honor to be here and have the opportunity to represent the South Division uh, and be here for the championship game. I want to commend uh, Coach Horton and the Maulers for what they've done to get here, the success that they've had, and I think it's got all the makings for, for a great event. I am really proud of what this football team has been able to accomplish this year. Uh, coming in, we talked a lot about all the new faces that were going to be on the 2023 team compared to the 2022 team, that we were not trying to defend anything, uh, How what rare air it is to be able to breathe to be a back-to-back -back champion, uh, that we weren't going to defend anything and how hard it was and why it was so hard and the difficulties and the challenges that we were going to have to overcome in order to have the opportunity to be back to this podium, just to have the opportunity to play this game. And so I was really proud of this team and the way that they came together, uh, the way that they have been able to make the plays on the field that they've had to make to win some very close football games, uh, and just the way that they've come together as a football team. I'm just very proud of them, uh, but honored to have the opportunity to represent the South uh, and to deal with these young men on a day-to-day -day basis. It has certainly been a pleasure and a joy for me and something that I have enjoyed uh, very much having the opportunity to coach these young men. Coach, uh, you might refer to yourself as the turtle on top of a fence boat or the duck boat above the water, <laughs> but one can't ignore the accomplishments that you've had with this team two seasons. 20-3 and three record, two South Division titles, now competing for a second championship. What has the process been like for you this season, just dealing with so many injuries, you've seen the, the roster turnover, and just to get back to this point, what does it mean to you and just to um, the satisfying thing as a coach is watching a group of young men come together. Um, we've talked about um, so much of today's world is about individual accolades. Um, but the real ones that matter are the team ones. And we had uh, Michael Irving spoke to this team last night and talked about how we live in an individualistic society. But yet, um, how hard it is. You can't play this game alone. Nobody can, nobody can have success alone. Uh, I can't do it as a coach without a player. Uh, Davion can't do it if the quarterback does it. The quarterback can't do it if the O-line doesn't do it. The, uh, the offense can't win if the defense doesn't do their job. It is a, the ultimate team game uh, just to give up your own individualism to go out and, and betterment for the betterment of the team. And so for me as a coach, it is very rewarding uh, not to put feathers in our cap for wins, but to see the adversity that these guys have come over, come through, and the buy-in factor from these players, uh, that has been the joy for me. And that is the thing that I have enjoyed the most, is that uh, yeah, the, wins are, the wins are nice, the individual accolades are nice, but at the end of all this, what I will remember the most uh, are the faces of the young men that came together, the stories that they had. Uh, those will be the things that will be with me for the rest of my, rest of my life, and that is what I've enjoyed so much about this season. championship last year, you're in the championship this year. I think a lot of people put some emphasis that you were technically the only home team last year. This year you proved that wrong. What's the biggest difference between last year and this year, even though you're in the championship? Um, well, there's a lot of differences, certainly. I mean, we could go back with the 2022 roster versus 2023 roster and the adversities we've had and what we've had to overcome to get here. To get here. Uh, but when you look at the season, uh, it was probably one of the more unique things I've ever done last year, having eight teams in one hub. You go down to eat breakfast and you eat with seven other teams. You know, the guy you're playing this weekend, you're sitting across the table with them having a cup of coffee. Uh, you sit with the same people at lunch and dinner. I mean, it was just very, it was a unique situation. Staff Staffs, players, everybody intermixed. We all ate together. We were all in that room together. Uh, this year, uh, really, it's just been us and one other team. And honestly, I, I mean, with them going in the morning, us in the afternoon, we never saw them. I mean, we, we never, it was almost like we were uh, when seven other teams disappeared and you were all by yourself. And then it was about what you did. I think that. Um, 
Fox, Moose, the league have done an unbelievable job uh, in the growing steps of this. I mean, obviously, I think it was brilliant to have everybody in the same hub a year ago to start to branch out now to have four different hubs. And I know as we talk about future, when does that go to six, eight? I mean, those type of things. Uh, I think it's been I think it's been great. And I think the um, we've kind of gone from sitting on a one legged chair to a two legged chair to a three legged. You know what I mean? And it's really getting the stability uh, of a four legged chair. Is that too much analogy for you? I'm Just sorry. One, you know? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. But it made sense, good. didn't it? Was it good? That was good. It okay. Okay, good. That's all I wanted to know. Um, but no, I think the seasons have definitely been different. Uh, right now, you could say the results are the same, but it's been completely different. And there's been, I don't know, there's probably, I don't know what that exact number is, but somewhere between a 50, 60% turnover on our roster from last year to this year. Uh, so there have been some different challenges and some different faces, but I think it's, uh, it's been much better as a league this year than it was a year ago. And that was the, um, that's what I was trying to allude to um, with my analogy. College days at FIU to your your um from time at the NFL to now, do you ever recall having this much fun that we can have now? Uh, no, not really. Um, I'm just kind of being myself. I think I'm showing my true personality, and I think that coach allows me to do that, and it's freeing and it's boosting confidence. And I think that um, just when I when I play free and play me, I I, I play faster. I play lighter. I'm, I'm able to think clearer and think faster. And at the quarterback position, that's all you need. You need to be able to think fast and make quick decisions. And um, I feel like I'm able to do that. The question's for Davion. Uh, coming into the season, you know, a new addition to the team. You saw in the offseason, I mean, you were with the XFL Roughnecks for a while. Mm -hmm. You come over and hop over to Stallions. What have you seen just throughout the season growing as a wide receiver with this unit with Alex, with the rest of the guys, and to end up being second place in the league for receiving yards? Uh, you know, it's been it's been a great experience, honestly. Uh, first days here, it was like me and Alex clicked from the get-go and uh, from taking the second team reps. But uh, just taking advice from Marlon uh, and guys that have been here, uh, it's been a great experience uh, learning this offense with Coach. Uh, it's just been all around good thing. Uh, I appreciate Coach for giving me this opportunity uh, and being here. And I appreciate Alex for giving me the ball. <laughs> Alex, you spoke about your confidence growing throughout the season. How much of the quarterback position do you think is a mental game, kind of feeling confident in yourself, opposed to the physical side of it, you know, to be a successful? Yeah, I mean, quarterback's probably 80% mental, in my opinion. I mean, you can't, you can be the best athlete in the world, the best thrower of the football in the world, and be the worst quarterback ever. I mean, if you can't, if you can't see what the defense is giving you, or, or picture the play in your head, and know how to attack that versus a certain coverage, it's your talent's useless. And I think Coach has really given me the confidence to know who I'm looking at on every play and what coverage and where I'm supposed to go with the ball and, and why. And I think the why helps. And it, it gives you the ability to make those quick decisions when, when the pressure's in your face and where your hot routes are, where your relief's at. So you're not really worried about anything they do because you have all the answers to the test. Like, you have a cheat sheet right in front of you. And I think that. The more the season goes, the more reps I've gotten has, has allowed me to know, just fill that cheat sheet up with all these answers that, um, that you know, these guys make plays for me and just makes it really, really easy. Uh, Zach Conlon, kind of USFL Newsroom. Uh, for Skip and Alex, uh, both of you, of course, having been you know, in this, with the Stallions two years in a row now, We've gotten to see that relationship between you two kind of grow and adapt year over year, different circumstances for each season, especially. How can you describe your guys' uh, status as kind of this QB coach OC relationship, especially what we've been seeing as it's adapted this year with the challenges of readjusting offensive pieces and moving things to kind of see fit at, that maybe got knocked out week one? Let's just start. Um. I think it's you know just grown with the with the confidence of me playing. I think has has helped the relationship grow. And I think year one was more about me learning it than it was about me playing. I think you know we had a three week training camp where it's like I'm trying to swim and you know I'm drowning in it and I'm just like trying to figure out what to do with the ball. 
Um, but the, the more I got comfortable in the offseason, I really studied and made sure that I came back with the knowledge of the offense. And um, I think that's kind of when I felt more comfortable talking to coach about what I see and what I like. And obviously, the reps help. It doesn't you know, hurt when you have success you know, early in the season. And um, just the, the confidence that he gives me by asking me what plays I want, what, what, what I like, what, what to attack, and what I feel most comfortable in. And um, you know, it just goes a long way for a quarterback's confidence and a team's confidence. And, and I would say that um, there's no doubt the reason it works, I think, is respect. Uh, I think the respect that we have for each other, uh, for the, the knowledge I have of this offense being that I built it and I've been running it for a long time, uh, the respect I have for him for his uh, work ethic, his talent, I think is phenomenal. I think what everybody is starting to see now that, to allude to the last question, to uh, now that he's where he is mentally and he knows where, uh, he knows all the answers to the test, uh, he knows how to plug the things in now, now you're seeing his talent take over. Uh, and I think that's probably a good analogy with it. But I think the reason it works is, is respect, the respect I have for him. Uh, I think it's very important now that he knows it well enough uh, I think it's very important that he's comfortable with what we're calling. Uh, we, I made this comment during the week. Uh, we communicate a lot during the course of the game um, on what he's seen. What's, what, you know, what does he see? What do you see the safety doing? Well, how, what, do you, what do you want to attack it with? You know what? I like this because it's not what I call. It's what he feels comfortable executing. And so it would be foolish for me to call a bunch of things that I think are good, but he doesn't like or isn't comfortable in. So I think it's the respect I have for him for how far he's come, for his knowledge of it. He knows it as well as I do. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that we talk the same language, even though to everybody else it may sound like gibberish. I mean, but um, we're speaking the same language. And it's when I call a play, sometimes, I mean, he'll look at me and be like, ah. All right, I, I understand what we're trying to do. You know what I mean? I, I, okay, I see why you put that tag on it, and so now we're going to attack this. So it's almost like um, we're thinking on the same wavelength, and I think that is really why it works. But it works because of the respect that we have and the way that we work together on a day-to-day -day basis. So, Daviana, obviously you had to learn that language. Mm -hmm. So uh, how were you able to pick it up so fast and be able to connect uh, with Alex and with Coach this week? Uh, you got to be a pro. Uh, you got to stay in the playbook each and every day. Uh, and still to this day, I still go through and skim through all my little notes and go back and look at all the stuff we haven't ran in a long time. Uh, you know, I've been with guys like Adam Thielen. He's, to this day, he stays in the playbook. So this is nothing different for me. I got to keep doing what I'm doing stay in the playbook and uh, try to get up all the other guys on the same page. It, oh, I was going to say about Davion, it does not surprise me that he's had the success that he's had. As a new face coming in, uh, he was somebody that he knows the offense better than anybody in the receiver room. I mean, he's the guy that everybody goes to to say, OK, what do I have here? What do I have? What, no, what, no, what do I run here? And I'm kind of famous for calling things out of the past a little bit. Sometimes I can, uh, I have a tendency to pull something out of my back pocket that, ma up. that maybe that I called the first day of practice. You know what I mean? And I'll call it in a game and be like, well, dust that one off. I mean, that one's coming out of nowhere. Um, but Davion's football IQ is incredibly high. Um, but I believe also that success, you can't have success without character. And I think the two gentlemen that are sitting here on my right and left, uh, I know with Davion's representative as our team, uh, with the Good Works team and what he did in his, his community involvement, uh, these two were at everything from the Veterans Day to the Children's Hospital. If there was a event to be at, uh, these two were at everything. Speaking at movie night in the park, whatever, uh, these guys really have jumped in with both feet. Uh, they've bought into the USFL. They've bought into the Birmingham community. Uh, they've bought into this football team. Uh, and I don't think it's a mistake to see the two having the success they have having with the character that they have, the talent they have, and the work ethic that they have. It's been a, it's been a really neat bond to answer the question earlier, which, is, which will be one of the memories that I will take away from this team. David, Sorry. talk about uh, you know, being Sportsman of the Year nominee for the Stallions. 
and what it means to be out in the community? Uh, it's, it's great, honestly. Uh, getting back into, into the community is something that is really big for me. Uh, you know, just like Coach was talking about, going to see the kids at the Children's Hospital. I uh, did that my rookie year, and uh, it kind of boosted it for me. Uh, getting back in the community is uh, something I think I'll do in the long run, not even after football. Uh, just going and getting back into the community, giving back to the community. They come and support us, so we should go and support them in any little way we can. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Alex and Coach will say the same thing. Uh, it's the driving force behind everything that I do, honestly. Well, Alex, uh, you know, both you and Davion were bo both voted uh, uh, as a nominee for for these for this prestigious position. Can you also talk about your your work out in the community and what it meant to you? Yeah, it's um, it's an honor to be able to even have the opportunity to do that, to give back to the people that support us. And um, like Davion said, I mean, every time I went to something, Davion was there before me, and it's just. He deserves the nominee, and he's a you know a great guy, great community, great person, and um, it's just something that that we love to do because they support us with everything they have. If they see us, they talk to us. So I just feel you have to give back to people who who help you get to places. And um, anything that I could have done, I did, and um, just really grateful to do it. It means a lot to me as a as a human and as a person. Alex, obviously you've seen so much success this season. A lot of that can be attributed to you just being healthy. I mean, last year you're dealing with some injuries. This year you've really emphasized taking care of your body, and I know you have some interesting routines. I think you eat the same meal four or five times a day, or something like that. Can you take me through just what what it is like preparing to stay stay ready week in and week out? Yeah, um, it's it's a um, it's a it's a battle. I mean, honestly, it's it's hard to to eat the same thing five times a day um, with small variations to it, and it's helped a tremendous amount. Like I can't explain to you how much it's helped as far as just recovering from games, you know, just, just my body feeling great. And I um, also say I can't do it without my family back there because they cook all my food on the way games. And it makes my life 10 times easier for when, we, when I travel so I don't have to pack all this food and carry nine bags on the plane. And, um, but it, 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 it helps a lot and I just, it helps in every aspect, not even just recovery, like it helps my discipline in on the field, off the field, with, with my study, with everything. It just it makes me more disciplined in every aspect, and that's what has led me, I think, to success on the field, off the field, and, and um, yeah. Tomorrow with the game, what's it going to take to win the Stallion second championship? Is he asking me? Any, to anybody out there. I mean, I think it's going to take, uh, going to take a great team effort. Uh, everybody's trying to build this game as the number one offense versus the number one defense, and that's certainly going to be one of the matchups during the course of the game. Um, when you look at you know, week one, uh, the first time that we played, which was week four of the season, and we played, we won 24-20, but we also had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Uh, and so you look at it, this was uh, I think one of the least number of points that we scored this year. They have a very talented defense. Uh, they're structured very strong, and it's going to be a great challenge for our offense. But it isn't just our offense versus their defense. It's also our defense versus their offense, and that's going to be part of it. And the special teams are going to be part of it. And I think it's going to be whoever can play the cleanest game, uh, what we term as play smart football, um, and play together as a team is going to be the team that's going to come out victorious. But I think it's got all the makings for a great game. They've got a lot of things going in their favor. Uh, everybody always talks about offense wins games, defense wins championships. Um, so how do you want to look at it? Is this a championship game or is this one game? Because if it's one game, offense wins games. You know, uh, if it's a championship, defense wins championships. So uh, I think it's got a making a great making, but. I think just as important is our defense versus their offense is going to be a big part of this. Um, and so I think it's got all the makings to be a great game, a game we're really excited about. They've won three in a row. They're playing with a lot of confidence right now. Uh, and so it has, it's going to be a great matchup. We're looking forward to it. Alex, what's your thinking about that? Um, I think from this great book that I'm reading called Chop Wood and Carry Water by Joshua, Joshua Medcalf. Medcalf, great guy. You know, <laughs> excellent. Um, it says, those who sacrifice the outcome will have the greatest chance of success. And I think that just it means the outcome will take care of itself regardless if you focus on what you have to do in that moment. 
And I think if I focus on every play like it's for the game and give everything I have for each play, then whatever the outcome is, I, I know that I personally have done what I could do. And I think that if every person on our team, all 40 active players do that, then it's going to be what it is. And I think that that's going to give us the best chance to win. And I think that we've done that in the past couple games. And I think that we need to do that again. And it is what it is after that. Danielle, what do you think about that? Uh, honestly, everybody just doing their job. Um, you know, coming in, having a lot of energy, uh, bringing our own energy. Um, I know this team is going to get everything out of me. Uh, if I'm hurt, I'm going back in. Uh, <laughs> just, it, it's, it's a big moment for everybody. Um, but we have to play like it's another game. Like Coach says, every week, go 1-0, 1-0 oh, oh mentality. Um, I think everybody just do their job, and I think we'll be great. New week, new challenge. I think, I think we got a few more people who want to come in. What the? Hey, party. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? What are we doing in here? So I think there's one more question that needs to be asked. Uh, we're going we're gonna to let uh, Daryl go ahead and ask the question. Well, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it 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 has it, been fun for us to watch the development of the relationship, and we got to see a little bit of it here in the press conference. So, whether it's time learning the offense, understanding the why, or time together to develop that respect, is time the number one reason that you became the USFL's MVP this season? Hey! Yes, sir. MVP. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, first off, thank you. That's that's awesome. I you know appreciate those who voted, <laughs> those who voted for me. But I mean, at the end of the day, without those guys right there, I couldn't do anything. Without him, without him, um, I would be just another guy. I'd just be a turtle on the ground. You know, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't have made it up that fence post, guys. Um, and um, I just really appreciate you guys. I want to say thank you. It means a lot to me what you guys have done for me, defense, offense, special teams. Um, and um, this individual trophy, is, it means a lot, but it doesn't mean what I didn't come here for this. I came here to hold that yeah. with mm -hmm. them. And um, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to try my best. You guys know when I say, I say, Give me everything you got because you're getting all I got. So let's get it. Alex, how's it feel to have your parents here watching? It's awesome. I, I, I couldn't have asked. Yeah, I couldn't have asked. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mom, Dad, and Uncle. I appreciate it so much for being here. It means a lot. Love you guys. Damn. How's it feel uh, having the MVP as your teammate? I've, knew, I've known it since week two, so it's nothing new to me. Honestly, I don't think it's new to anybody that's standing back there behind us. Uh, we knew what we were getting from them from the get-go, so. A great guy. <laughs> it is a just honor uh, and deserved um, from every of these guys who worked so hard. But it is certainly, uh, it's certainly well deserved. Not yet. We're past the one-legged stool. I think when I look at the success of the USFL right now and the way that it's rolling into year three. I think we're we're long past a one-legged stool. Three-legded microphone. <laughs> we haven't had a chance to go to the uh, two audience. So, uh, <laughs> Oscar, I see your hand. Oscar, Oscar, my guy. Oscar. <laughs> Good question, Oscar. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations, Alex, for the MVP. I have a question for Alfred and Bruce Wayne. Okay. From now, Bruce, huh? now Bruce Wayne, you are yes. under the great for the MVP. I'm making an analogy, coach, uh, with the boxing stuff. This is uh, the number one offense versus the number one defense. You talk about it, but it's more like a thriller in Manila. Ali versus Fraser, more recently, Evander Holyfield versus Mike Tyson. <laughs> what do you think about that? Thanks so much for uh, all the season. Good luck. 
Well, Ola Oscar, we certainly appreciate you joining us again, and I look forward to visiting with you a little bit more tomorrow for sure. Uh, your support has been incredible. Thank you very much. Uh, I do think it's a, it's a heavyweight fight. I mean, you know, I, I talked to my kids one time about George Foreman because I was a huge fight fan. And my boys looked at me and said, George Foreman, he's the guy with the grill. You know, I mean, and so when you look at it, uh, heavyweight fighting is no longer what it used to be. But I certainly think this matchup has all the makings of two great football teams coming together uh, to duke it out. I think it's going to be a heck of a battle. It's going to be a heck of a game. And I think it's going to be very entertaining for anybody that has the opportunity to watch it. Thank you very much. And Alex, could you say some words to all the Mexican fans all of your career and now enjoy with the MVP? Gracias, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate your support, um, and we, you know, we, I love seeing your name on this on the TV in front of us. We always get excited. Me and Coach always joke, always say, "Hola, Oscar." Oh, hola, Oscar. Uh, hola. We appreciate the fans. Um, thank you guys so much, and hope to hope you enjoy tomorrow. Well, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much for being here today. Really appreciate it. You're the South Division champions, and tomorrow we'll see who gets to hoist that trophy. And defending yes, 2022 sir. champions. Yep. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Everybody, we're going to sit here. We're going to have Daryl Johnson, the USFL president of football awesome. operations, come on up and uh, uh, say some awesome. remarks. Yeah, awesome. How awesome is that? I knew it already. That's awesome for him. Thank you.